in the small town of Point Pleasant, West Virginia, a series of chilling encounters during the late 1960s would give birth to one of the most enduring legends in American folklore, the legend of the Mothman. Today we dive into the eerie sightings that gripped the town in 1966 and 1967, as ordinary people came face to face with this enigmatic creature and his connection to a local tragedy, said to be caused by his presence. Was he a harbinger of doom, foretelling impending disasters? Join us as we delve deeper into the secrets and mysteries of the Mothman phenomenon. In the year of 1966, Point Pleasant, a small town of three squared miles nestled along the banks of the Ohio River in West Virginia, enjoyed a tranquil and close-knit community. Life moved at a slow pace. With little more than 4,000 residents, that took pride in their town's rich history and natural beauty. However, the peaceful atmosphere would soon be disrupted by a series of mysterious and unsettling events that would forever mark Point Pleasant's place in paranormal lore. Till this day, people unaware of his history can't even imagine that this little countryside town was home to one of the most scary legends in America's history. That still amaze and confuse whoever tries to understand and discover the truth behind it. It all began in November 1966, when reports of strange sightings started to emerge. Residents claimed to have encountered a creature unlike anything they had ever seen before. Described as a tall, winged figure with glowing red eyes, the creature quickly became known as the Mothman. Its presence sent shockwaves through the community, leaving many bewildered and fearful. As word of the Mothman spread, Point Pleasant became a focal point for paranormal enthusiasts and investigators seeking answers. The town found itself thrust into the spotlight with media's attention and curious visitors descending upon its streets. Local authorities and law enforcement tried to calm the growing unease, urging residents to remain vigilant but assuring them that there was no immediate danger. During this time, the atmosphere in Point Pleasant was filled with a mixture of intrigue, fear, and wonder. Eyewitness accounts poured in, recounting encounters with the mysterious creature. One of the first ever of such encounters happened on the 12th of November, 1966, a few miles west of Point Pleasant, in the town of Clendenin. Two gravediggers went about their duties, without knowing they would be the first to see the creature. As they worked, they couldn't shake the feeling that they were being watched. A creeping sensation crawled up their spines, and they instinctively turned their eyes toward a nearby tree. And there, perched on a branch, was a sight that would forever haunt their memories, a figure unlike anything they had encountered before. The gravediggers stood frozen, their eyes fixed upon the creature before them, as the creature flew out of the trees and hover above then for about a minute. But it was the creature's eyes that held them captive, a fiery red glow that pierced through, seeming to penetrate their very souls. Two nights after the initial sighting of the Mothman by the gravediggers, another resident of Point Pleasant found himself entangled in the web of the paranormal. This time, it was Newell Partridge, a local man who would come face to face with the enigmatic creature. As darkness descended upon the town, Partridge settled into his humble abode located just outside of Point Pleasant. It was a quiet and peaceful night, or so he thought. Little did he know that the tranquility of his rural retreat was about to be shattered by an encounter that would test the limits of his beliefs. Gazing out of his window, Partridge noticed two piercing red lights through the darkness. Their intensity and eeriness sent a chill down his spine. As he focused on the source of the lights, he was struck with disbelief. A figure emerged from the shadows, revealing a tall and dark figure that suddenly flew away over the woods, not before unleashing a paralyzing scream, breaking the silence of the night sky. Newell Partridge's encounter with the Mothman became a pivotal moment in the unfolding saga of Point Pleasant's mysterious visitor. His testimony added another layer of credibility to the growing body of evidence surrounding the existence of this entity. The following night, 15th of November, two young couples, Roger and Linda Scarberry and Steve and Mary Millette, were driving through a dimly lit road. As they got near the TNT area of Point Pleasant, the couples were taken aback by a strange sight. In the glare of their car's headlights, they spotted a towering figure standing by the side of the road, the figure was unlike anything they had ever seen before. It stood at least six feet tall, possessed a wingspan that stretched beyond its frame, and its most striking feature, two large glowing red eyes that left the couples paralyzed. 
Overwhelmed by a sense of fear and curiosity, the couples watched in disbelief as the creature unfurled its wings and took off into the night sky. To add to the desperation of the passengers, the creature started following the vehicle. Mr. Scarberry, driving close of a 100 miles per hour, said the creature was keeping up with him, matching the speed of the car. The sound of its wings flapping filled the air, and at one point letting out his terrible scream, the same Mr. Partridge here the night before, leaving a lasting impression on their minds. As the couple entered the town, the tall figure turned back and made its way back the TNT area where he was before. Shaken by the encounter, the four friends quickly made their way to the local authorities to report what they had witnessed. The police, initially skeptical, couldn't dismiss the genuine fear etched on the couple's faces. The sighting had left a deep impact on them, fueling a mix of terror and fascination. The following day, a press conference was held. The event garnered significant attention from the media. The press conference became a platform for the couples to share their experiences firsthand. They corroborated the accounts given by law enforcement, adding their own perspectives and emotions to the narrative. Their testimonies lent credibility to the sightings, capturing the interest and curiosity of the press. As the conference progressed, reporters fired a barrage of questions, seeking more details about the creature and the potential dangers it posed. Dr. Robert Smith, a wildlife expert, was in attendance, gave his explanation about what the couples had seen. He said the creature was nothing more than an abnormally large crane, which was blown out of its migration route. However, it is important to note that while the crane theory was presented as a possible explanation, it did not fully satisfy all the details and eyewitness accounts of the Mothman sightings. The witnesses themselves, as well as many other residents of Point Pleasant, were convinced that the creature they encountered was something beyond a simple bird or crane. The crane theory became a subject of debate and skepticism among researchers and those who closely followed the Mothman phenomenon. Many believed that the crane explanation did not adequately address the strange features, behavior, and overall impact attributed to the Mothman sightings. After the press conference, the news about the creature spread through the town. Unfortunately, as always with media frenzy, a lot of attention seekers appeared with fake stories of encounters, and after that point, all alleged Mothman sightings should be viewed with prudence. But among the many stories, some leave us wondering if a person as affected as the next one is lying. Near the TNT plant area, the Thomas family resided in one of the few homes. It was on the evening of the November 16th that they noticed a peculiar phenomenon in the sky. An unusual, funny red light that moved and hovered above the nearby TNT plant. Perplexed by the sight, they concluded that it couldn't possibly be an airplane, but they couldn't discern its true nature. A short while later, Mrs. Marcella Bennett, a close friend of the Thomas family, arrived at their residence. Eager to investigate the strange sighting, she parked her car and stepped out, carrying her baby in her arms. Suddenly, a stirring near the automobile caught her attention. As she turned her gaze, a spine-chilling sight greeted her. A figure that seemed to have been lying down slowly rose from the ground. It was a large, gray entity, surpassing the size of an ordinary man, with eyes that emitted a terrifying glow. Overwhelmed by fear, Mrs. Bennett experienced a moment of sheer panic, causing her to inadvertently drop her infant. Regaining her composure swiftly, she picked up her child and hurriedly sought refuge inside the Thomas house. The family locked themselves in, but their sense of terror only intensified as the creature approached the porch and peered into the windows. Desperate for assistance, they contacted the police. Yet by the time the authorities arrived, the Mothman had vanished without a trace. Mrs. Bennett's encounter left an indelible mark on her psyche. She struggled with the traumatic experience, seeking medical help to cope with her overwhelming anxieties. Haunted by unsettling dreams, she later revealed to investigators that she believed the creature had even visited her own home. Recounting the chilling sounds of keening she frequently heard near her isolated residence on the outskirts of Point Pleasant, the remote and abandoned TNT plant, the place we saw the most occurrences to have taken place at in 1966 and 1967, became the lair of the Mothman in the months ahead, and he could not have picked a better place to hide in. The area was made up of several hundred acres of woods and large concrete domes where high explosives were stored during World War II. A network of tunnels honeycombed the area and made it possible for the creature to move about without being seen. In addition to the man-made labyrinth, 
The area was also comprised of the McClintic Wildlife Station, a heavily forested animal preserve filled with woods, artificial ponds, and steep ridges and hills. Much of the property was almost inaccessible, and without a doubt, Mothman could have hid for weeks or months and remained totally unseen. The only people who ever wandered there were hunters and fishermen and the local teenagers who used the rutted dirt roads of the preserve as lover's lanes. The Mothman remained over the years surrounded by mystery, blurring the lines of real and fake. Skeptics normally agree with Dr. Robert Smith's explanation that said the Mothman was a large sandhill crane bird and mistakenly associated with a supernatural being. And this theory is not that far-fetched, since the bird is common in North America and reaches a height of around four foot, but many are capable of reaching the six foot tall mark. It also has red feathers around his eyes, which matches the description of the witnesses. However, all the eyewitnesses have not agreed with this theory, saying that what they saw was not a sandhill crane, since the creature they laid eyes upon had very different characteristics of that of a bird, and they would have known the difference. The most cited difference was the size. The Mothman scene was well over seven foot tall, way larger than the normal crane, and much larger the most tall of the species. Another difference was the red glow of the eyes. The red color came directly from the eyes, brightly shining. They say it could not have been feathers. And plus, while the owls have eye shine when a light source is point towards them, most birds don't. And the Mothman had eye shine even without any light source around. The third difference was the high screech scream, much more human-like than bird-like. And as Mr. Scarberry pointed many times, what kind of bird fly at over 100 miles per hour? But if indeed it was a hoax, certainly it was a successful one. The tourism in the town after the first sightings and media reports skyrocketed. And even to this day, thousands go to the small city of Point Pleasant to see if they themselves can see the Mothman. And that, of course, moves an industry of hotels, restaurants, and made the city famous across the world. But how the many witnesses gathered in a short period of time of less than 10 days without any contact between themselves. How high is the probability that they all would misidentify the same thing and give the same testimony about it? Uh, and how come we don't have any occurrences before that? However, after the initial claims in the end of 1966 and the later frenzy that carried well into 1977, it's rather odd that the sightings in the area came to a suddenly halt after a tragedy that struck the city. The most infamous sighting of Mothman was on December 15, 1967. Locals said they saw Mothman flying over the Silver Bridge, which was a suspension bridge over the Ohio River that connected Point Pleasant, West Virginia to Gallipolis, Ohio. According to Mothman lore, shortly after the creature was spotted on the bridge, the bridge collapsed, resulting in the deaths of 46 people. An investigation into the disaster found that a fracture in a suspension chain was the cause. Mothman has been allegedly sighted at other disastrous events since the bridge collapse, with people claiming to have seen the creature before earthquakes, tsunamis, 9-11, and even in the Chernobyl accident in the Soviet Union. This leaves locals and storytellers split on whether Mothman should be considered an evil or benevolent creature, since no humans were ever harmed by it. Some say the creature is either bad luck or causing these disasters in some way, but others speculate Mothman may be able to see into the future and that the monster appears to warn people of impending doom. Whether the Mothman is a harbinger of doom or a benevolent being, it's up to you to decide. As the sun sets on the tales of the Mothman sightings in 1966 and 1967, the town of Point Pleasant in West Virginia remains forever etched in the history of mysterious encounters. The enigmatic winged creature, with its piercing red eyes and haunting presence, captivated the imagination of the town's residents and sent ripples of curiosity throughout the world. To this day, the Mothman's legacy endures a symbol of the inexplicable and the unknown. Real hoax, good or bad, the Mothman's presence has left an indelible mark on the fabric of Point Pleasant's history. The stories and sightings continue to intrigue and fuel the curiosity of those who seek to unravel the secrets that shroud this fascinating phenomenon. The Mothman's enigma lives on, forever fluttering in the realm of the extraordinary, reminding us that some mysteries are destined to remain unsolved. We would like to thank you very much for joining us on this incredible story. If you enjoyed the episode, don't forget to like the video 
tell us your opinion in the comments and subscribe to our channel. We have many more cases of cryptids and sinister creatures to cover. And as always, thank you for watching.